the next few days, The Athletic is just £1 per month for six months. See the link in the description to sign up now. Hello there, I am JJ Bull and I'm an analyst for Tifo Football. And we are going to look at Italy and ask whether they are any good before Euro 2020 because they didn't even qualify for the World Cup in 2018. They can't be any good, the silly fools. Um, we're going to look at that. But before we do that, it's very important that you subscribe to help us grow this lovely channel. This is Tifo IRL. It's our new channel. If you want to grow it, please subscribe. It really um, would be wonderful. And you'll get all the videos we're going to do during the Euros. And you can give it a like and all the comments. All the stuff you see other YouTubers doing all the time. Like, like and subscribe, please. You know the drill. So if you do that, that's great. And then we can talk about Italy and question whether they are dark horses of the tournament or just regular horses. Are Italy good? Yes. They uh, are currently on a 27 match unbeaten run. The record is 30, their national record is 30. Um, they did that, they scored 37 goals in qualifying and conceded four, uh, didn't lose a single game. Yeah, they're pretty good. They're also not as defensive as they used to be. So you might remember Italy from such TV shows as Italy in the 5-3-2, like Antonio Conte's kind of setup he had in 2016. Moved away from that. It's a bit more like um, Cesare Prandelli's 2014 sort of team, uh, but we'll come into tactics after. First, we're going to look through the squad to show you kind of what they've got and why I think they're so good. I'll go through it all the way from goalkeeper as right through to the rest of them. So you've got Gianluigi Donnarumma, who is uh, one of the best young goalkeepers in the world, possibly one of the best goalkeepers in the world. Um, he plays for AC Milan for now. He's uh, going to be available on a free transfer in the summer and there's a lot of noise about him possibly going to somewhere like Juventus or PSG. That's the sort of level we're talking about with him. He's been in the first team at AC Milan since he was 16. Um, yeah, when I was 16, I don't know why it wasn't that. I was learning to play the solo from Freebird and I realised there's actually like three guitarists to play the solo for that, not one. So it's why it's a lot harder than you think. Anyway, I don't know if Donnarumma can play the solo from Freebird, but he's a good goalkeeper. Um, they've also got, so the, the squad's a mixture of experience and uh, youth, but most, a lot of players in their peak years, so kind of between like 22 to 27, that sort of age bracket, really important. Um, Donnarumma is obviously younger, but he's a very experienced, so great goalkeeper there. They've got um, Sirigu uh, on the bench and Alex Merritt, both experienced goalkeepers. They haven't brought uh, Gigi Buffon, so they haven't taken him along, even though he'd just be a third goalkeeper to bring experience. He's not there, so uh, yeah, a lot of experience missing. Thankfully, they make up for that experience by having uh, uh, Giorgio Chiellini and Leonardo Bonucci with a combined age of roughly 900 between them. Uh, they're still playing, they're still playing. Uh, Leonardo Bonucci, exceptional playmaker from the back. Th th these guys are a bit older now, they're about 36, 37. Um, don't have the pace they once had, but they don't need it because they have positional noose, tactical awareness. They're really clever. Chiellini tastes quite good as well. Luis, uh, Luis Suarez bit him, you might remember that from the World Cup back in the day. Um, that's the guy. Uh, he's left-footed, Bernucci is right. They will always play as a centre-back pairing in a 4-3-3. Uh, there's options on the bench, there's Alessandro Bastoni and there's uh, a Serbi as well that can come on. And they might they might uh, play, if Italy win their first two games and are qualified, you might see them come on to, um, to replace them to rotate. So they don't have to, two older guys don't have to play every single game. Otherwise, I'd imagine it'll be Chiellini and Bonucci there. Now, uh, at right back, Alessandro Florenzi, he plays for PSG. These two boys are at Juventus, Florenzi is at PSG. Uh, good player, right back. He won't be quite as attacking as some right backs in the tournament will be. He'll mostly tuck into a three at the back. We'll look at that in a bit as well. At left back, it's probably going to be um, uh, Leonardo Spinazzola. He plays for Roma. He's a really attacking fullback. Uh, he can play basically any position. He can play as a forward, centre back. He, he says he only can't play goalkeeper, but I bet he can. Uh, and he'll be making a lot of these sorts of runs up the wing um, to give him a lot of attacking width. Again, we'll come to that in a second. But yeah, Spinazzola is likely to start. If it's not Spinazzola, Emerson Palmieri, who you may remember from his Chelsea days, he doesn't want to come on. He wants to stay there. He's probably not going to play that much anyway. He's only played two league games for Chelsea uh, this season. <laughs> they still think of him quite highly in Italy, which is why he's in the squad. But I think it's going to be Spinazzola who starts there. The midfield. So you've got a very experienced um, defensive line with uh, pace and attacking verve. Verve is a good word, isn't it? With Spinazzola. 
In the midfield, very technical, really, really highly uh, talented midfield trio. Jorginho plays for Chelsea, you know him, plays as the six for Italy. He kind of controls the tempo, passes the ball around, will come deep to receive it. We'll see how he works within the team slightly after. Marco Verratti has been struggling with injury since May, so he might not be ready for the first game, he might not make it till the end of the group games, but he's likely to start if he can. He's, yeah, a really tidy player, uh, really nippy, great ball control, really technical. He's a little bit like, if you've never seen him play before, he, he plays for PSG, he's a little bit like how Andres Iniesta used to be. Um, yeah, just moves, just moves into these kind of spaces, always knows where the space is, can turn and receive the ball in tight spaces. Uh, he's, he's really good, I like him. However, this guy here, Nicolo Barella. So he's just come off the back of winning uh, the Scudetto with Inter Milan. He is super dynamic, full of energy, box-to-box -box midfielder. Um, he's managed to play about 50, 60 games for an Antonio Conte team this season, and he doesn't even look in the slightest tired. If you've not heard of this guy before, uh, it's a good chance you're going to enjoy watching him. He could be one of the standouts of the tournament. He's 24, just come into his prime. Really, He's very creative, but he's got everything you need of a midfielder. He can, he can do it all, the defend, tackle, pass, does, does all of it. Uh, and he'll get up and down like this um, all day on the in the games that they're playing at the Euros. That's what we're talking about. Now, the forward line, as we say, it's always a three. So Lorenzo Insigne is likely to start. He's, uh, he'll play the left wing, but he'll come into the, he'll start on the left, but he'll come inside to these sorts of half spaces here. He plays for Napoli, really attacking player. Uh, he's, like a, he's like a 10, but really he's an inverted winger. So he'll play off the left onto his right foot. And yeah, and he'll go into these spaces here to try and score around about these areas here. Chiro Immobile um, is hugely prolific at a club level. So this season, I think he's got 25 goals in 40 games in league and Champions League combined, but he only has 12 in 45 caps for Italy. So not hugely prolific at international level. And that's one of the problems Italy have had for a while is they don't have a striker who's quite clinical enough at international level. They have Andrea Bellotti, who plays for Torino. He can come on in place of Immobile, but They'll never play together. It'll always be one or the other. Immobile is certainly going to start. And um, yeah, if, if, he, if he can find his clinical nature in this tournament, he could end up being one of the top scorers quite easily. On the right, uh, this is one of the ones that I'm not 100% sure about. So Federico Chiesa uh, could start here in the right wing. Federico Chiesa is the young player who plays for Juventus. Not the most technically gifted of players, but he's just a bit like he's determined. He's driven. He's that kind of rah kind of player who's going to drive and get at you. He'll work all day long. He'll do everything you need to help with the press to win the ball back. He's also a very good player. I'm not saying he's not a good player, but there are players who are better with the ball than him. His dad uh, is Enrico Chiesa, who used to play for Italy as well. Um, and speaking of Buffon earlier, uh, Buffon once played in the same Parma team as Enrico Chiesa and then played in uh, a cup final recently for Juventus with his son Federico. That's how old Buffon is. But yeah, so Chiesa might play here on the right and he'll have to go into wide areas a lot of the time. He can play on the left as well, so when Senior doesn't play then Chiesa can play on the left too. But the noises from the Italy camp are apparently that Domenico Berardi, who plays for Sassuolo, um, he has been training really well and it's quite likely to start on this right wing. He can play as a nine or a winger. Um, yeah, I really like I really like Berardi a lot. He started in the friendly against Czech Republic. The Italy won four 0 They were excellent in that game. He scored a goal in it. Um, it. Yeah, it sounds like he might actually start on the right. There's a few other options on the bench that we've got, particularly in midfield. So if Verratti doesn't make it, and that seems quite likely, uh, Manuel Locatelli is going to come in. Uh, he's more of a creative kind of attacking midfielder who can come into that slot there and he plays regularly for Italy. Um, other options include Lorenzo Pellegrini who is at Roma. That's definitely where he's from. Now Pellegrini is more of a 10. He can play in the midfield as one of these sorts of roles here. But he could also play off the left. Again, if Insigne is not playing, Pellegrini can come in here. Um, We'll put Locatelli in there and Pellegrini can do that. And the reason he can do that, as we're going to come on to, is that Spinazzola makes these runs, which means the left-sided forward can come inside anyway. Um, other options, 
Uh, Bernadeschi, the Juventus, can come on to the right as well. He can probably play on the left, but he mostly plays on the right. Um, and there's a young guy called Raspadori who might come on and play. He's 21. He's just played. He's just come off a season playing for Sassuolo. He's broken into the first team. Has scored some goals, but he's never played for Italy. So he could come on and end up being one of these um, these wonderful stories where a player comes out of nowhere and uh, does things if he gets a game because Immobile is going to play almost certainly. And wherever I put Immobile, I'll put him back up here. Lovely. Uh, other midfield options: you got Cristante who could play and uh, Piscina who could also come in and uh, both of those could play as a six instead of Jorginho. Cristante is more of a more of an eight, I'd say. Um, Stefano Sensi, who was in the squad, is just had to pull out because of injury. He was playing for Inter Milan. He was the most likely option to play as a six if Jorginho needs a rest or something like that. But yeah, the the squad is it, like, it's really good. They've got experience. They've got uh, a bit of pace up front. They've got uh, really technical players in midfield. Uh, yeah, they're really good. Um, so we should probably look at how they're going to play next. Italy are um, almost certainly going to play a 4-3-3 all of the time. Like I said before, it's not uh, as defensive as you might associate normally with Italian teams. They actually play quite a high line. So I'll move them up to how they, when they, they move forward up the pitch. A couple of things. When Italy come forward, so Insignia will start wide left, come into these half spaces here. And Mobley is going to play as a proper number nine penalty box poacher. He can hold the ball up well, Link. And uh, Berardi, if he starts, is going to come in to these positions sometimes, but will mostly stay wide to give the team width. And the reason he's doing that is because Florenzi is going to tuck in as a right centre back most of the time. So Bonucci is going to come here to be the deepest player. Chiellini will come round to the side of him. And they form a sort of diamond, and Jorginho helps with the diamond here. So this is the sort of diamond that they form. Pretty crucial to how they play. Barella is going to make these runs into these spaces here. So Berardi gives you width. Barella can come in here, and he, he scored a goal doing this against Czech Republic, actually. He made a, one of these driving runs um, to get into this position to shoot. I'll uh, give the ball, and he did this sort of thing. He took a deflection, but beat the keeper. Still a goal. They all count when they go in. Berardi's going to uh, kind of do his bits all around here, and Sinia might be more up here. Verratti can work in these spaces almost as a 10. He does that for PSG quite a lot, work in these kinds of areas here. And then, as we said before, Spinazzola is going to come wide, and he'll be level with Berardi on the right. So they'll have the same, like, the width will be exactly the same between these two. So he gets as high as Berardi on this side. Barella and Verratti look after the midfield. If they lose the ball, they will instantly try and press and win it back. Uh, it's a little bit like um, what you might think of a Pep Guardiola team. So it's all about keeping the ball moving. Um, short passes, working the ball through the lines. Uh, they're also really good at counter-attacking, actually. They've scored a few goals recently, and especially in the qualifying and in World Cup qualifiers, where the ball just goes from back to front super quick. So they can do that too. But yeah, the idea is that they keep the ball and they win the ball back as soon as they can. Now, one of the, the things that opposition teams will look to, to do with them is stop Jorginho from kind of dictating play. A lot of teams do this in the Premier League as well, in the Champions League. But because of the players Italy have, if Jorginho starts to get marked, and Florenzi can move a little bit wider, Jorginho can drop into these sort of deeper positions, and Bonucci becomes the playmaker, because that's something he can do. He's got an excellent range of passing, can see a pass. Uh, well, he can fire long balls out into the side for Spinazzola, he can fire it in for Berardi, he can fire straight into Mobile, and you've got these midfielders working alongside with him. So if they mark one player that they, uh, the opposition mark, Jorginho or one of the other playmakers, Bonucci, even Chiellini can step in and be that extra playmaker, really important. When they build play, what we'll often see, we'll move them back a little bit, almost always the build from goalkeeper to forward, all the way up in the back. Um, Insignia will stay wide left, he'll hug the touchline. Berardi will stay wide right, hug the touchline. And what they want to do is um, create space in the opposition midfield or defence to allow line breaking passes. So let's say they're playing against a team in a 4-5-1. A so the distance between these players, they're gonna, you wanna keep your formation, make sure you're, you're sort of out of possession, you want to be slightly tighter to, to prevent forward passes being able to go through these lines. That's what you want to prevent, which is why teams will often get a bit tighter out of possession, like this. Uh, the midfield is really where you want to block. So if the ball gets, if they can take the ball to these sorts of areas where Barella is just now, you often find the team will, uh, opposition teams will drop slightly deeper like this. And you see there's just no space 
between these lines. That, so you, you can't really get the ball unless you're, unless you're super good in the ball, and Italy kind of are, but you, it's really hard to get the ball forward like that. But if you have your players staying really wide and they're trying to track them, these guys will have to pull out a little bit. Especially if you're going to one side, if you move the ball to one side, the teams will sort of stretch out like this. And you get these little bits of extra space in between, and that's the kind of thing that Verratti's going to look to play in for Immobile. And then if you get the ball into Immobile, you'll get Insigne running in behind, the ball can come into him. He's offside there, obviously, but if he starts and times his run better, you'll get in there. And that's another thing that if they do, actually, is the, the forward, the wide forwards, wingers, whatever you want to call them, they will rotate positions with, uh, with the striker. So Immobile might, he's a nine, but he might drop deeper. And that allows Berardi to come in here, or Chiesa to come in here to make these uh, kind of attacking runs. It allows Insignia to make these attacking runs here. And you might even find that Insignia and Berardi get in behind, like this with Mobile slightly behind them, if that's the way that Italy managed to build. They basically have a heap of options. So Italy have great players all over the pitch. The 4 3 3 is really fun to watch. Um, they, they press. They drop back when they need to, and they keep the ball well. So they almost defend by just keeping the ball rather than having to constantly like go at the opposition. They keep the ball really well, and that is kind of part of their defensive strategy. We have looked at how Italy build play, how they attack, all the rotations, that sort of stuff. They're clearly very good. I like them a lot, but also um, they have weaknesses, as every team does. Um, one of the weaknesses, pretty harsh to pick up on him, uh, Florenzi's not the best defender, uh, maybe 1v1 situations, a lot better than me, but yeah, uh, so the weaknesses might be on the right side, um, but then if you've got Chiesa, really hard working, can help support him, Berardi also does a bit of work on the right, it's going to be useful for them, and you've got Barella here, who can help out with that too. It's a really slight, really slight nit, uh, nitpicking at it actually, to say that's a, that's a weakness. The only real weakness actually, is that they lack a certain kind of dynamism in midfield apart from Barella. So they may be missing power, like just pure like strength, um, height, aggression. They don't have that. You associate like France and Germany have players who have that kind of power and not momentum, but they've got speed, energy. That's one thing that if they might not have, but because they keep the ball in the way they play, they don't have to worry about that so much. The only other thing you can think would be that Bernucci and Chiellini, because they've been playing football since the 1700s, uh, any balls over the top, if they have the high line, so if they're playing against Wales, for example, and Wales have Gareth Bale, he's quite fast, uh, and they might play with like Harry Wilson as a false nine, and he's quite fast, and they've got Dan James, who's really fast, and that's mostly what Dan James does. Uh, balls in behind, or just not, not long balls or you know, chip passes, but any passes played through these lines here, that's if they get in a, in a foot race, as we discussed before, it's called a race. If they get in a race with these sorts of players, that might be where the space is, behind the back line, if they're pushed up high. But because they press so well, and because uh, Chiellini and Bonucci, and what they'll do is when the position turns over higher at the pitch, Bonucci and Chiellini will take a couple of steps backwards, anticipating the ball over the top, because <laughs> they're really clever. And they know exactly how the game's going to play out, uh, like chess masters, so they're always a step ahead. So. Italy have cunning, they're very tactically intelligent, they play a nice brand of football to watch, they have technically gifted players, they have pace where they need it, they've got a good goal scorer, they have an excellent goalkeeper, they have one of the possible standout young players of the tournament. Yeah, rather than saying that Italy are dark horses, I would say they might actually be lovely, lovely horses. <laughs>